way the laser cooling, initial laser cooling process works is you have your atom in the middle and then it tries to go one way and it gets pushed back by, by, by a laser beam. So you have six, six beams um, going against each other and basically it can't get out. So it's like a little mosh pit for atoms, if you want to call it that. That's... In this paper, which we recently published, we created essentially a new kind of molecule, something that people had never seen before. And it was only possible because of all the tricks that we're able to do on this optical table to create atoms at essentially absolute zero. And at these really, really low temperatures, we could form molecules that are held together very, very weakly in a very unique structure. So that structure was such that we had a single atom uh, excited to, uh, with a lot of energy in, inside of it so that it was gigantic on atomic standards. And the electron in that ad atom would run around all the other atoms in its background and essentially herd them in and build a coat around itself that it would then carry around. It's a very strange structure and it's something called a polaron. And polarons are actually really important in other settings, such as in metals or in superconductors. But normally in that setting, people are using that concept to describe how electrons move. So it's very unusual to have it appear in atoms like we're studying it now. So what we're looking at here is, is basically all the infrastructure that's required to laser cool and trap atoms. So like I said, down there is the source and these atoms come through this tube and then they occupy a very small volume in this central chamber. And all the action happens in this very, very small volume. What's really unusual here is that we were able to create this object that has such interesting connections to so many different aspects of science. So we're atomic physicists, we play with lasers, and we play with atoms, but making a new molecule puts it in the realm of chemistry. And, but also it's connected to these um, different systems that you see in, in solids, in metals, that describe how, how electricity moves around. So it's, it has these connections to all these different phenomena. So it's very interdisciplinary, and that makes it very interesting. And of course, we can hope someday there might be some applications that come out of this work, but right now we're just most interested in the fundamental physics, trying to understand how nature behaves when we put these pieces together in a different way than has ever been done before.